Hello, students. OK, we're going to go ahead and finish up the last set of notes in unit three, the 3.3 .3 notes on photosynthesis. Um, in this video, we're going to look at topic three, which is about the Calvin cycle. Um, so in topic two, we talked about the, the light reactions or the light dependent reactions, which take place, place in the thylakoid. Um, and in those reactions, we ended up um, making um, a few different things. We ended up making some NADPH who's carrying these high energy electrons that were energized by these photosystems and ultimately came from water. Um, we did make some oxygen, which is the result of water losing those electrons at photosystem two and that oxygen was produced. Um, and we also were able to make some ATP um, during the light dependent reactions. And so the NADPH and the ATP, those are gonna move on to the Calvin cycle. We're gonna see them now in topic three, why um, those were needed um, are made here in the, the light reactions. And then the oxygen, that's now just released to the, the atmosphere. So we're not really gonna see him again. So in the Calvin cycle, let's go back to that. Um, there's going to be a series of chemical reactions that take place that start and end with the same molecule. And so the starting molecule in the Calvin cycle is this five carbon molecule called rubip or ribulose bisphosphate. And what's gonna happen in this cycle is we're going to start um, building some sugar molecules um, by putting together smaller molecules and using ATP and those high energy electrons from NADPH. We're gonna need the ATP and those electrons from NADPH to start putting together smaller molecules to start building um, sugar. And so uh, in this cycle, what we're gonna see is that uh, we're gonna see an input of, of small molecules in the form of CO2, carbon dioxide. Um, and then uh, as a result of this cycle occurring, we're gonna see an output of uh, a small sugar called glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate or G3P is gonna be produced in this cycle. Um, and in order to make one G3P molecule, which is a, a three carbon molecule, the cycle, the Calvin cycle is gonna happen, is going to ha have to happen three times. So every three, cycles of the Calvin cycle, you're going to end up making one G3P. So um, we're going to go ahead and go through what happens here in the Calvin cycle. It can be broken down into three phases, um, and you guys just need to know the gist of what's going on in each of these phases. So we'll start with the carbon fixation phase. This is the first phase of the Calvin cycle. And what happens here is this is where um, <clears throat> Rubip, this five carbon molecule, is going to be joined with a carbon dioxide molecule to form this six carbon molecule. And then the six carbon molecule and then the next reaction will break in half into these two molecules here called 3PGA. And when we go through this in, the, in this diagram here, <clears throat> we're going to go through this cycle happening three times at once. So everything I just said, we're going to um, pretend that it's happening three times uh, at the same time. And so we're taking not just one rubip and one CO2 to make two of these guys, but we're going to actually take three of these guys and join them with three CO2 molecules to make ultimately six of these guys. So that's why you guys see these numbers here, because we're going to go through what, what would happen if the cycle is happening three times. Um, and you'll kind of see why we have to talk about it happening three times at once soon. Um, but that's called the carbon fixation phase. So putting together these rubips with CO2, forming these three PGA molecules right here. Um, this is accomplished by an enzyme called Rubisco. So Rubisco is the name of the enzyme who catalyzes this catalyzes the reaction that joins CO2 with rubip. Um, and this is a really important part uh, process here that happens in biology, where plants. This is where plants are going to get the carbon from the air. There, there's carbon atoms in the air in the form of CO2, and now this carbon is going to become part of the plant and the plant's organic molecules inside of the plant. And so now officially after the carbon fixation phase, that CO2, that carbon that existed in CO2 is now carbon that is part of the plant and it's part of the organic molecules that are inside of the plant. Um, so we call that carbon fixation because that carbon used to be free in the atmosphere flying around in these CO2 molecules. Um, but now that carbon is in a fixed position and now is part of this cell and this organic molecule of this plant. Like this is where it is now. Um, <clears throat> and this is super important because this is where all, this is where plants get all of their carbon. So all life on this planet, <clears throat> including plants and us and bacteria and all cells, we are carbon-based life forms, all of our cells. Um, and all life on this planet is made of mostly carbon. 
and plants, they get all of their carbon, 100% of their carbon comes from the air. Like this is where they get all of their carbon that's gonna be used to build all their carbohydrates and proteins and nucleic acids and lipids, all the organic molecules that make up the plant and the plant's body tissues and the plant cells, like the whole structure of the plant, all of that carbon, they're getting right here from the air, um, from the CO2 molecules in this process called carbon fixation, um, which is then gonna now put that carbon into these molecules these organic molecules that the plant is then going to um, uh, continue using and changing and lots of different chemical reactions to make everything that the plant needs to build itself. Uh, so anyway, that's the carbon fixation phase. And then in the next phase, we have what's called the reduction phase. And the reduction phase, we're gonna take those three PGA molecules. This is a, a three PGA molecule, and this is a three PGA molecule. <laughs> and we're gonna reduce those molecules. Um, which is why we call it the reduction phase. <clears throat> Reduce means gain electrons. So these three PGA molecules are going to gain electrons, and they're going to become these molecules here called G3P. Um, and so when you look at these guys, they look like they're the same thing. This is a three-carbon molecule with a phosphate, and this is a three-carbon molecule with a phosphate group. Um, they are similar molecules, but they're not exactly the same molecule. So just know that I'm not showing you the whole chemical structure of this molecule and that molecule. They are different molecules, um, uh, even though they look the same in this diagram here. But basically, again, in the reduction phase, we're going to take these three PGA, mo three PGA molecules and they're going to gain electrons and become G3P. In order for that to happen, there's a couple of reactions that take place. Those electrons are going to come from NADPH. So NADPH, which was made in the light dependent reactions, is going to take those the, and has those high energy electrons. Um, we are going to now give those high energy electrons and drop them off here so that they can join with these molecules to become um, G3P. And then um, that NADPH, when it drops off those electrons, becomes NAD plus, NADP+. Plus. So that's the reduction part happening here, where this is now gaining those electrons as this guy drops off and loses those electrons. And then this also requires some ATP, as you guys can see here. So again, some of that ATP that we made in the light reactions, we are now using here in the Calvin cycle during the reduction phase. Um, and on here, you guys will see these numbers here, because um, again, we're looking at as if, as if this cycle was happening um, three times at once. So in the first phase, we had three molecules of rubip joining with three molecules of CO2 becoming six of these molecules of three PGA. And then the reduction phase, all six of those molecules of three PGA will become six molecules of G3P, five of them, and then there's one right here. Um, and the reason why we are talking about this happening in sets of three is because um, every three Calvin cycles will end up producing six G3Ps like I just showed you. So when this cycle happens three times, we're going to have six G3Ps. And the rule is every time you have six G3Ps, one of those G3Ps gets to leave the cycle. So once you have six G3Ps, which will happen when you've done the cycle three times, you now will have a leftover G3P that gets to leave the cycle. And then the plant cell gets to use this G3P to build lots of different things, including glucose, sugar, and other organic molecules. Um, but the other five G3Ps that we made, they have to continue on into the last phase of the cycle, and they're gonna be turned back into, um, into rubip. So in the last phase, we have um, what's called the regeneration of rubip phase. And in that phase, we're gonna take those five remaining molecules of G3P, and we're gonna turn them back into the, into the three molecules of rubip that we started the cycle with. Um, and so if you count the carbons here, there's three carbons in G3P. And if you have five of them, that would be 15 carbon atoms in all five of these molecules. And if you look at rubip, the three molecules of rubip that we started to do the cycle three times, those three molecules of rubips, they each have five carbon atoms. And if there's three of them, that would be 15 carbon atoms. So basically what's happening here in the last phase here, the, the regeneration of rubip phase, is we're taking those five molecules of G3P and we're just rearranging those molecules into these, these three molecules of rubip. We're taking all these carbons and rearranging them into these guys that we started the cycle with. And um, to do that, it does require some ATP, a little bit more ATP to finish this off um, in these last couple of reactions here in the regeneration of rubip phase. And then you officially now have the three rubips that you started with. So then the cycle can happen another three times with another set of three CO2 molecules that enter the cycle. Um, and then you can make another set of six G3Ps. One of them gets to leave, the other five go back to being three rubips. 
And then you can do the cycle another three times and another three times and another three times. And every time you're doing the cycle three times, it's going to require three CO2s that go into the cycle, one per cycle. And then when it happens three times, out comes a G3P molecule. Uh, so in a somewhat complicated way, the cycle is, is kind of accomplishing something simple. It's basically just taking these um, three carbon dioxide molecules, um, which each contain a carbon. And in the cycle, those carbon dioxide molecules are being put together um, to form a molecule of G3P, which is a, a three carbon molecule. So three carbon dioxides go into the cycle and one G3P molecule comes out of this cycle. So that's the, the overall gist of what we're accomplishing here in the, in the Calvin cycle. Um, and so then this G3P, like I said, the one that's left over, um, the one that you make every three cycles, this one G3P that gets to leave, this is now um, going to go to the plant cell, um, who's then going to use this G3P to, uh, to build other organic molecules. Uh, most commonly, it's going to use this to build uh, uh, glucose. And so um, real quick before I wrap this up here, though, I just want to point out a couple more things. This, this whole series of reactions, the Calvin cycle, you guys, this takes place in the stroma of the chloroplast. I don't know if I reminded you of that, um, but this takes place also in the chloroplast, but this is in the, the stroma of the chloroplast, so outside the thylakoid. So if you go back all the way back to this picture of the chloroplast in topic one, I just want to make sure we're all thinking the right thing here. Um, this, the Calvin cycle is, is, is taking place outside the thylakoids in in the chloroplast. So in this space out here, which is called the stroma, that's where the Calvin cycle is taking place. Um, and so uh, that G3P then, if I skip all the way back to uh, the slide we were on, um, that G3P that we end up making, the plant is then going to use that G3P, like I said, to build lots of different things. That G3P can be used to build glucose. Um, to build glucose, you just need to take, you need two G3Ps and you can put them together to form glucose, uh, a, gluco a molecule of glucose, which is a six carbon molecule. Um, but G3P is very versatile. Plants can use G3P and turn it into lots of different things as part of the plant's metabolism and all the different chemical reactions happening in plant cells. They can take that G3P and they can turn it into fatty acids and glycerol to start building lipids and phospholipids and cell membranes and fats and oils. Um, they can turn it into other types of sugars. Um, they can take that G3P and turn it into amino acids that can then be used to start building proteins, um, which do a million different things inside the plant cell. So this G3P will ultimately be used to build uh, a huge variety of the organic molecules that we find in, in plants. Um, but a lot of times that G3P does become glucose. And so to, to, to make a glucose molecule, C6H12O6, you're going to need two G3P molecules um, because each of those G3Ps is a, is a three carbon molecule and glucose is a six carbon molecule. So you're going to need two of these guys. Um, and so that's going to require the cycle to happen six times. So the cycle is going to have have to occur six times to have three to have two G3Ps that get to leave the cycle. Because remember, every three cycles, one G3P is made that gets to leave the cycle. So then you would have to have the cycle happen another three times, which will then produce a second G3P. And then you can make a glucose from that. So to make glucose, the cycle is going to have to happen six times, which is going to require six CO2 molecules, one per cycle, to make one glucose. You're going to need six CO2s to make one glucose. Um, so that you can do the Calvin cycle six times. Um, and then that's basically um, it for topic three. Uh, I will point out one um, last misconception that students usually have. I just want to clarify real quick. Um, a lot of times students have a misconception that photosynthesis is how plants make ATP for their cells. They think that, okay, in the chloroplast, there's photosynthesis happening, and that's what makes the ATP for plant cells. Um, because even in this picture here in the light-dependent reactions back in topic two, I was telling you guys that some ATP is made. Um, but that's definitely not the case. So um, in plant cells, they plant cells have a mitochondria, a, a different organelle, the mitochondria, that's in our cells as well. And the mitochondria, that's what his job is to make the ATP for the plant cell. So in the mitochondria, we're making a buttload of ATP that's then used by the cell to power lots of different things happening inside the cell. Now in photosynthesis, there is some ATP that's being made during photosynthesis inside the chloroplast, 
but be careful because this ATP that's being made in photosynthesis, that ATP is immediately going to be used in the Calvin cycle. So we did make some ATP, but then we're gonna use it immediately here in the Calvin cycle. And so really there's no, there's no leftover ATP during photosynthesis. There's not an abundance of ATP that's left over that the plant cell gets to use. Like this ATP that we're making in the chloroplast, that's gonna stay in the chloroplast and then be used immediately during photosynthesis because photosynthesis is gonna require that the, those ATP molecules during this, the Calvin cycle. Um, and there's none left over to share with the rest of the plant cell. So just know plant cells don't get their ATP from photosynthesis or from the chloroplast. They get their ATP from the mitochondria. That's where you have a huge abundance of ATP made for the plant cell to use. Um, but in the chloroplast, we are making glucose or we're making G3P, which is going to provide the building block to build all sorts of organic molecules, including sugar. That's the job of the, the chloroplast during photosynthesis. And then a lot of that will become sugar. It will, a lot of it will become, a lot of that G3P will become glucose. And then plants can take that glucose that they built from them, built for themselves during photosynthesis, like right here. Um, they can take that glucose and then send it to the mitochondria. And then the mitochondria can do cell respiration using that sugar to make ATP. Um, but just know that that's two different things going on inside the plant cell. Uh, but anyway, that's it for topic three. Thank you guys. I will see you later.